<clears throat> Hi, I'm Kurt and welcome back to CompScience 5. Today we're going to talk about function calls and the recursive stack and the fact that function calls themselves emulate a stack, which is a LIFO data structure last in, first out. So we haven't written a lot of code in CompScience 5. We don't plan to. However, this is how a flow of a program works. A program can be thought of just an algorithm, just a set of instructions to do a certain task. And because it's a set of instructions, you have to do it line by line by line. So here we have a program called main that has function A, function B, function C, and these are subroutines, and inside these methods are other function calls to other functions. And they, they work like a stack. So the last one you do is the first one that needs to be completed before you can progress down. So why don't we just go through an example? So here's our call stack right now. We start with main, because it's the main program. And after that, we go through, we have function A, which is up top. So we have, we have to call the function, so we write it on our call stack. Function A, great. And next, we go into what function A does, right over here. And function A looks like it's calls function one first. So we need to get this done. So we put it, we push it on top of the stack. Right there. And function one, all it is going to do is return. Very, very simple. So once this is completed, we can pop it off the function call stack. And we go to, we go, so we were here and now we're on this line. We're still in function A. So now we have to do function two, which is exactly the same as function one, it just returns a value. So we're going to first push it on top of the stack. Right? And once it returns, we can pop it off. Now we finish both function one, function two. Now function A is done in main. So we can go on to the next one. So we can now pop off function A, and instead we're on function B. Great. So function B calls function two. Function two is over here, so we can just write it up there. We, pop, we push it up there, and because it returns, we, that's all it does, we can immediately pop it off. Now, this is done here. B is also done. We can pop B off the call stack. Now we're done with B. We can move on to C. So we take function C. It's on top of our call stack. Great. All function C does is call function 1. So we put it up here. Super. And function 1 just returns, so we pop it off the top of the stack. Now uh, C is done, so we can also pop C off the stack. Now all these values are done and we're at main, and we've finished. And that's how the call stack works. Now let's get into what is a recursive stack. So the recursive call stack works exactly the same as a regular call stack. All that a recursive function is, is a function that calls itself. You know how last time we had function A calling function 1 and calling function 2? A recursive function calls itself. So I wrote a very simple recursive function. Very first and foremost, you need a base case. You need something for you know the program to exit. Otherwise, it'll be an infinite loop forever. So if x is less than 1, we're going to get out of it. And we're going to send in a number, an int x, as a variable for the function. So you know if x is less than 1, we're going to get out. Else, we're going to call ourselves, here's the recursion part, function of x minus 1 and then we're gonna print x. So let's go through an example about how the call stack works. This example is gonna take, is a one-way ticket to Funky Town. We got funk of five, because it's comp sign five. So x right now is equal to five, and we're going to push that onto our call stack. So because five is greater than one, we're gonna have to do this recursive call, which is five minus one is four. So now we're gonna have to call funk of four. So now x is equal to 4. Since 4 is greater than 1, we go into our else clause. Remember, don't forget to push on top of the stack for the recursive stack. Now we have 4 minus 1, which is, you guessed it, bunk of 3. So now we go into here, and we notice that 3 is bigger than 1. So we go into our else clause, 
Don't forget to push this into your function called stack. So now we have three minus one is two. So now x is equal to two, x is bigger than one, so we go into our else clause, we're still gonna recursively call ourselves. We're gonna push this onto the recursive call stack. Now we're onto bunk of one. One is still not less than one, so now we go back into our else branch, and we see that we have to push this on top of the call stack, of course. One minus one is zero. Now we're into bunk of zero. So, oh my lord, look at, look at this. We've entered our base case, zero is indeed less than one, so we're gonna return. Now, we are out of the function, the function has stopped, this recursive function is over, and now the stack unwinds. So we pop it off. Remember, stacks are LIFO, so we have the last item we pushed onto it is the first that we pop off. So func one will print one, pop again, func two will print two, Pop again, func3 will print 3, because right here we just are printing out the value of x. Pop, func4 will print 4, and last but certainly not least, func5 will print 5, and that's comp sign 5 for you. That's recursive function calls. Join us next week for another riveting lesson.